Do you want to know which soft plastics you need to get started bass fishing? We're going to talk about that. Welcome back to another episode of 5-Minute Fish Talk. Good morning and happy Friday, all you 5-Minute Fish Talkers. I've got five minutes on this time of year, and you know what that means. Boop, it's time to get real. Today we're talking about soft plastics. Obviously, this is a very important subject. Why? Because, I don't know, 80% of the time when we're on the water, we as bass fishermen are throwing soft plastics? That's right. Today I wanted to break down some of the most important soft plastics to get started bass fishing. The reason being is because if any of us walk into a Cabela's, a Bass Pro, a Walmart, no matter where you go, there are a lot of soft plastics available, and it can be kind of intimidating for those of us that are kind of new to the sport. So I wanted to cover down on what ones are most important to get started, and then as you gain confidence and as you start fishing more, you can obviously start purchasing more. But these ones will really get you started, they'll get you some confidence on the water, and then you can go from there, you're gonna catch lots of fish, I guarantee it. So, I'm gonna break down each one of kind of like my top five in no really particular order because it can vary from different places. Um, you know, if you're in New Jersey versus Texas, things might be a little bit different. But these top five, pretty much no matter where you are, should catch you fish. First and foremost, Senko. What is a Senko? It's basically a weightless worm. Now, you don't have to throw it weightless, but about 90% of the time I do. Whether you're throwing it Texas rig to make sure that it's nice and weedless, or just throwing it rigged wacky, so just hooked right through the middle, this is really a target fishing bait. What I mean by a target fishing bait is you try to hit spots. You're not necessarily covering a ton of water with it. You're hitting a tree, you're hitting a stump, you're hitting a dock, so on and so forth. The way you fish it is you actually let it sink to the bottom, nice and slow. A lot of times on the initial fall is when you're gonna get bit. But then if you don't get bit, you just kind of twitch it up to the top and let it sink again. Very, very simple, but you have to be patient. But I guarantee you this, you will catch fish. If you want to add a weight because you want to get it down there a little bit more, or maybe it's super windy, you can do that as well, and you can fish it very similar. Now, the next thing that I want to talk about is just a craw. And I'm not going to talk about a specific brand or anything, but essentially something like this. A craw that has some flapping um, little little paddles on it and essentially what you can use this for is a little Texas rig. You can put a little weight on there, you can Texas rig it and you can flip that around trees, you can cast it out and drag it nice and slow. Anywhere where there's a population of crawfish or even bluegill for that matter, the bass will eat these things. It's one of my most confident baits if I'm not getting bit. Just throwing a Texas rig craw, it catches fish everywhere and you know what? It actually catches a lot of big fish as well so that's another one I would look into. The next thing, and I probably wouldn't have said this, you know, six, seven years ago, but these have become so popular and they become so, so great for catching fish, is a small swim bait. This one happens to be a little Kytec. You don't have to spend that much money if you don't want to, but I tell you what, if you do, these things catch a lot of fish. Really, this is one of the most simple things you can do. You can either rig it up on a weightless hook, or you can put a jig head right through it, kind of like this and you can just cast and wind, baby. So if you don't really like the idea of, you know, working a bait, if you want to just cast it out there and reel it in, if you want to be, if it's really windy, something like that can be a great option for a beginner bass fisherman. And I tell you what, no matter what size of swim bait, from two inches all the way up to 10 inches, they seem to catch some pretty big fish. So I would definitely consider that as well. The next thing is a ribbon tail worm. I mean, you cannot go wrong. These have been around for years and years and years. I would get something like a little Berkley Powerbait 7-inch worm or whatever brand you want to get. And essentially, all you do with that is very similar to the craw. You just Texas rig it. You throw it around trees. You throw it around grass. You throw it around anything. It's one of the most versatile baits in the world. Um, and you can just drag it. And I would just basically just slow drag it. Maybe twitch it up a little bit if you're coming through some brush. And the bass will smoke it. And I've got a lot of fish doing that. And you know what? I like throwing a 10 inch worm and I've had a five minute fish talk actually discussing that topic. It's probably a little bit much to get started if you're not super confident, but I tell you what, a 10 inch ribbon tail worm is a very big fish bait, so I would also consider that. Now, last but not least, I know, you know if you're watching me and you've been watching my channel for quite some time, you obviously know what I'm going to say next. Let's talk about this. A little bit of finesse TRD or small three inch plastics to be used on a Ned rig. Now, a Ned rig, if you're new to bass fishing, you might not know exactly what it is. Essentially, it is just a small finesse 
plastic on a little 1 16th or 1 15th ounce jig head. Essentially, I've got a ton of content on that, so you can take a look in the description below if you want to watch a little bit more about that. But essentially, you just cast it out there and you drift it nice and slow. You shake it a little bit, but you don't overwork the bait. And guess what? You'll catch thousands of fish on that thing. Regardless, these are some of the five soft plastics that I think everyone should pick up to get started. Now, I may have missed something. You guys are all great at fishing too. If you want to help the community, drop a comment below with some of your favorite. Holy cannoli! That never happens. I normally go like three and a half minutes. Five minutes, baby. Anyways, like I said, drop a comment below with some of your favorite soft plastics. And otherwise, if you want to check out the most important hooks to get started bass fishing, look at that video right there. And if you want to see the most important jig heads to get started bass fishing, look at that video right there. And we will catch you over there. You know what I'm going to say next, right? Have yourself a fantastic weekend and uh, we'll catch you next time.